on the report. So greetings <laughs> and joining us today on behalf of Thornwood High School Lady Thunderbirds basketball team, Coach Richardson South Shore International Lady Tars basketball team, Coach uh, TJ's Finger High School Lady Titans basketball squad is a very, very special guest. Um, she is the 2017 McDonald's All-American Superstar, UCLA Lady Bruins All-Pac-12 Performer, and 2021 uh, number one pick of the New York Liberty, star forward, and one of the top two-way basketball talents of our generation, Miss Box Office herself, Miss Must See TV herself, Michaela Onewedi. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, how, how are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing great, thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. Um, I don't know if you know, and, and I know you're not in Chicago all that often, um, with the exception of uh, a couple of times you've, you've, beaten, you've beaten us at the Wintrust Arena in Chicago. Um, but you have a huge fan base in Chicago, especially with the young ladies and the youth here. So thank you so much for your constant um, inspiration um, that you provided uh, to our future leaders of tomorrow, not only on the court, but off the court. Well, of course, no problem. What is your, um, one of the first questions uh, that we have, <laughs> uh, this is from Christina. What is your favorite thing to do here in Chicago? In, um, in the couple of times you've been here, obviously, to play the sky. Um, what are some of the things, like, before the game or after the game, some of the, your favorite things to do in Chicago? Yeah, so I've actually been to and visited Chicago quite a bit. Um, back in my AAU days, like, Chicago was kind of the hub for um, girls basketball. And so I've been there a couple of times. And oh, yeah, and you I played in the McDonald's all of all the Yeah, time. exactly. And so I've been to Chicago quite a bit. And so um, I just think, like, just, there's just so much things to do. Um, the food is great. The weather at the time, I was I was not there during the winter or during, during the summer. So the, top, the, the the weather was really nice. And like I said, there's just so much to do. Um, when I was in AAU, we were able to go to like this fair um, where we just like eating a lot of food, um, yeah. kind of just indulging in the Chicago culture. So yeah, it was really fun. I haven't been there in a while um, besides, you know, going to Chicago and we played them. But yeah, it's definitely somewhere that, you know, I love to be and love to be surrounded by. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, um, before we go into the Q and A, have you um, kept up with the um, with the uh, WNBA Final Four, the the, the, the playoffs? Um, uh, the sky and the sun is is in a heated battle, and then on the okay. other end, it's it's the Las Vegas Aces versus uh, the Phoenix Mercury. Have you kept up um, at all, or have you kind of like kind of like um, and then you know? like after the season, you know, getting ready for the offseason? No, yeah, I definitely kept kept in touch with that, with the games. Um, I've watched every single game except one. Um, I wasn't able to. But, yeah, they've just been really exciting games. Like, that's just what the WNBA is, and especially during the playoffs. Um, you're playing for something so much bigger than yourself. And so, yeah, the games have, you know, been something that I'm so happy to watch. Um, they've been nothing short of amazing, super suspenseful, um, thrilling. And so I, I've been having a great time watching the games. And, it's it's you see like Chicago is up you know now two one on Connecticut which you know a lot of people probably didn't expect so I'm excited to see how you know how it ends up and at this point I don't even know who's gonna win anymore because yeah. yeah, the drama is so crazy yeah it, yes yeah, is it, exactly up for grabs and um, speaking of you um, uh, Christina's other question is how do you personally assess your rookie year um, with the Liberty. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot to be, you know, happy and proud about. Um, obviously, like I was given the opportunity to uh, be put in the position to start, uh, which is something that I didn't expect. But I think I'm just so grateful for my, you know, coaches and the staff that believed in me that were able to, you know, give me that role and thought that I could uh, be successful in that role. And so, you know, um, it was hard. It was tough. It was, it's definitely a transition, but it, it was easier knowing that I had just so many great people surrounding me. And uh, being, to be able to win the Rookie of the Year award was just an honor. Um, it's so many greats who have won that award, and you know to be put in that put in that kind of place in that position is really cool. And so Lisa I can definitely Leslie, say I'm proud of Candace Parker, the yeah. list on and on of uh, you know 
some of the all-time greats. Yeah, so I can definitely just say I'm proud. Celebrated their 25th year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking, and congratulations uh, once again um, for the yeah. WNBA Rookie of the Year. We were rooting for you here in Chicago uh, to to take that award. Thank you. Um, well deserved, um, because uh, like I said at the top, um, uh, your, the greatness that you displayed on both ends of the court, offensively and defensively, was phenomenal. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> and then speaking of the Liberty, has such a Core, such a phenomenal core of good young nucleus, um, starting with yourself, Sabrina Onesco, uh, obviously, uh, Dee Dee Richards, who we had the chance to talk to um, a couple of months ago ourselves, um, uh, Betnija uh, uh, Laney. Uh, what are some of the team expectations uh, for the 2022 season? Yeah, like you said, we had a great core group. And obviously, like a lot of us, we're, we're a very new team as far as like experience playing together. And so I'm just really excited for 2022 when we're able to, you know, mesh a little bit more and have that one year of experience under our belt. And like you said, with Sabrina, um, Didi and Benajah, and that's just, you know, just the beginning of something so, so special. And so we're really excited for next year because we know that the experiences that we've had, um, you know, the ups and downs, sometimes um, the roller coaster that we had in my first year, like they're going to teach us so many lessons for next year. And so I'm really excited. I think that the fans should be really excited. I think that Brooklyn should be really excited because uh, we're just going to grow and just keep getting better from there. What are you planning um, on playing internationally during the fall, winter, or, or are you going to take the off season to, to kind of relax? No, I actually well, 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 not relax, but like, <laughs> you know. No, no, yeah, no, I understand. No, I'll actually be heading to Spain pretty soon to play. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. when, when, when does your um, overseas uh, season start? Um, so it's actually already started, but I'll be going in a few, kind of a few months, just, um, and then it goes up until April, I believe. So it is pretty, a pretty long season. So I'll be gone for a while, but I'm really excited for the, you know, this the experience. I've never, like I've did, I've done USA This will be your first year. Yeah, this has been my first year overseas. I've done like USA basketball where I've traveled a lot, but like not for this. In the Pan American Games that you played. Yeah, I was the Pan American Games. I went to, I was doing three on, USA three on three. So that took me a few places. So it's not my first time out of the country, but it's definitely the first time for this long, for sure. Oh, wow. Oh, that, oh, that's going to be amazing. We're going to be rooting for you for, for, from afar, and, and we're going to be expecting reports, <laughs> you, know, you know, if at all possible, you know, in between the seasons. Um, Amira's uh, two-part question is, who was your toughest arch rival at UCLA? Was it the, 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 the hated USC Trojans or was it the Ducks of Oregon? Because I know, I know you faced Sabrina plenty of times yeah. in Pac-12 action. Yeah, so obviously I went to UCLA, you know, I'm repping it today, but right. um, so obviously USC um, is definitely our, one of our rivals, but I feel like our team really got up for Oregon games because it was like, all right, like we know they're really good. And we've had so many close battles with, with the, within them. I think I, I played Oregon probably like seven times my whole career. So it was a lot of times I've played them. And so um, just that was, was something we really got up for. We really got excited for Like when Oregon came into our house, we're like, okay, like we really want to beat them. And so like, yeah, of course, USC, like the rival, rivalry within the LA is cool. But like, I feel like Oregon was, really, we were like, yeah, we really want to win this game. What um, uh, this question is from from Sierra. Um, what what are some basic exercises uh, that one can do this uh, in the morning before going to school? What what yeah. were like some basic exercises or regimen that 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 you went through um, back when you were in high school? Yeah, you're, you're, you're from Colorado, right? Yes, I am currently from Colorado. Yes. And so, yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think for me, it would just be like yoga. Um, I would like just search up like 10 minute yoga, yoga workouts on YouTube. And like, it'd be so easy. And so you can like, kind of see what difficulty you want, whether that's medium, hard or beginning, whatever it may be. Like, I think yoga is so refreshing and it kind of gives you just like a nice start to your day. And so like, that was definitely something I would do, um, you know, in college a lot, actually. And then I started doing it at, at the beginning of my WNBA career as well, um, just to kind of not calm your nerves and just to start your day off right. So yoga is something that is obviously it's a physical exercise, but it's not something where you're exerting yourself so much. And then again, it's super peaceful. 
Um, and I think that's such a great way to bring in the day for sure. Um, do you keep tabs or, or even now, uh, do you keep tabs of like your normal calorie intake, um, you know, on a daily or weekly basis? I actually don't, um, but I also have help from my nutritionist from the New right, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so she has kind of, we, we meet with we meet them pretty often, and so they just kind of tell us, like, what we need to eat, what we need to be eating more of, and then I'll kind of give my input as to what I do like, what I don't like, and they'll kind of cater the meals to how, what we've kind of talked about, or like, when we're not um, in practice or not at the facilities, they'll kind of let us know what our plate should be looking like, and so I don't personally, like, track my calorie intake. Um, but I do my best, you know, eat well and take the advice that our nutritionist has given us. <clears throat> when, when, when is the best time to burn calories? Is it in the morning time? Um, obviously, when you're on the court, you know, that's easy to do. Um, or um, have you ever, like, worked out after a game or, or do you give your body, you know, a chance to kind of, like, heal after, after a basketball game? Yeah, I personally have never worked out after a game just because I exert so much physical energy that it's yeah. like I have nothing left at the end. And so I have heard people do it and I think it's beneficial for some. But for me personally, um, you know, I just go hard in what I'm doing as far as the game or practice. And I've had experience where I practice in the mornings. And so that just has been my kind of like my routine since I've been in college. Um, and that's what we do with New York Liberty as well. And so that's kind of what I would say is the best time firstly for me. Um, I've had, you know, like night practices before in high school, but I would say I prefer the morning practices and the morning kind of um, energy and exercise. Oh, okay. Oh, this is a question that uh, just came in from, um, from, from Zariah. Um, did you ever have a have a class at UCLA with, with Lonzo Ball. Obviously, Lonzo Ball is, is with the Bulls now. So, so that that was, did, 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 did your years overlap? Because I think Lonzo was only there one year. Yeah, no, it didn't. It didn't. So he left the year before I came. And so obviously he did the one and done. And so I'm, unfortunately, I didn't get to see him play. Um, I know that the, the gym was rocking when he was playing. So I wish I did, but no, we did not um, go to school together. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're excited about Chicago. Um, fact, yeah, that's really that cool that he's on the Bulls now. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're trying to get a squad with, with Zach Levine, you yeah. know, uh, Nikolai Vucevic and, uh, and, and uh, DeMar De, uh, DeRozan. So we, we're trying to do something. We, we, we're trying to knock off the Lakers, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's right. a tall task, especially with who they have now. But, you know, um, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we may be a couple of years away from that. But um, what is the one message? This is another question from Soraya. What is the one message that you would like to share with many young ladies that would like to become the next uh, Michaela on their wedding? I would definitely say um, just stay consistent. I think sometimes um, during the process, it can be some days where you don't want to practice, you don't want, you know, to run or whatever it may be. But I just think staying consistent is so important. And with consistency comes discipline. And so when you're consistent and you're like, okay, like I'm doing this every single day, you, you kind of develop a self-discipline that you wouldn't have if you didn't do stuff like that. And so that's what I would say, you know, my college career, like that was the biggest thing is I'm going to show up every single day for practice. And you're, you know what type of Michaela you're going to get. You're going to get a high energy Michaela who works really hard, who gives her all and like is empty at the end of practice because I, I worked really hard during that day. And there was never a day where I people could say I took a day off, you know? And so that's really important for me. And once you continue to stay consistent, like that's when you can, you just trust the process. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs and basketball, life, relationships, whatever you may, you may do and whatever you may be in, but just trusting the process and kind of seeing the day as a singular event and not like this long, long, long journey. I think that's so, so beneficial and so imperative. Like even my success is just like, I'm going to show up today and I'm going to show up right now and be consistent right now. And so that's what's really, really important for me just throughout my basketball career in general. Mm -hmm. what, what has been uh, the, the most inspiring story uh, during your time as a, as a basketball superstar? Like from me personally? Yes. What, what is the one moment that affected you the most that, you know, even when times were tough, that, that, that one instance that, that put you over the goal line to, to say, you know, I can't give up, you know? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I would definitely say 
um, probably more recently, obviously, when Kobe passed. I think for me, like Kobe was such a big part of just basketball. He was a big part of the WNBA. He was a big part of women's basketball. Absolutely. He was just a big part of, of everything that, you know, basketball stands for and even more so than that. And so I think obviously that was a really sad event for like the whole world. The whole world was mourning when Kobe passed. And I think he just, like he said, I said, he stood for so much and that he, he continued to just fight fearlessly in basketball and life. And you look at him, you look at somebody who's such a competitor and it's like, he, he inspires me to want to go harder. You know, he inspires me to want to be consistent every day. He inspires me to want to have, you know, that Mamba mentality that he, that he kind of per perceived himself on. So I would say, if, unfortunately, obviously he passed and that was really sad, but I think it taught people so many things and he's inspired so many, so many, so many generations of people. And so that's one thing I would definitely say. Uh, speaking to our um, Chicago youth, as far as um, the tough transitioning from being a high school student athlete, that, that, that's a high school senior in the transition into being a freshman in college. Uh, can you explain the importance of self-discipline and health and fitness when attempting to achieve your goals and as a student athlete? What was your toughest transitioning from being a high school senior, McDonald's, like I said, McDonald's, 2017 McDonald's All-American, to your transitioning to college life as a freshman at UCLA? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not even like gonna sugarcoat it. Um, my transition from senior, my senior as a high school uh, high schooler to college was one of the hardest transitions I've ever had to make. It was harder than even my transition from college to the pros, honestly. And just like the pace of the game is very different, the physicality is very different. Having to learn more plays on the fly, being being more in tune with your basketball IQ, like it was really hard for me. Like I remember my first summer as a freshman, like I. It, I struggled so hard, so much, you know, and um, thankfully I had my other four, three freshman class um, teammate, teammates there. And so that really helped me kind of just like, we're struggling together, but it really wasn't easy. But I'm really excited I had that experience because it, it made me better throughout my four years. And so I would definitely say just prepare for it. Um, there's not a lot you can do in high school, I think, to, to all the way prepare you for college you're just gonna have to go through it and everybody does it you're gonna your freshman year you're gonna hear it like it might be your hardest year and that's okay because you're gonna grow from that and so there's not I wouldn't say a, a super great way to prepare for it for it because the transition will be really hard but just like I said have that self-discipline have that consistency that even though it's hard even though like sometimes I don't understand everything like I'm gonna come and be consistent every single day and that'll take you a long way regardless of how hard the workouts are how much you're running how much sometimes you don't want to be there like that self-discipline will take you so far throughout your freshman year and even throughout your years in college. Uh, Jalen's question is how long, and touched upon that, Jalen's question is um, how long were the average uh, times of workouts um, before an upcoming uh, Pac-12 battle? Uh, take us into like, like the preparation and, and getting, getting ready for, for uh, USC, Oregon, Oregon State, yeah. you know, um, those, those uh, Pac-12 rivals? Yeah, so Pac-12 specifically, this is not specific to other conferences, it's just the Pac-12 for women's basketball. We play on Fridays and Sundays. And so if oh, I was wow. Saying, so yeah. only Fridays and Sundays? During the Pac-12, yes. We only play on Fridays and Sundays. Yeah, and so the preparation for the week, um, we would do Monday, like pretty hard. Tuesday would be an off day. Wednesday, we would start our prep, our two-day prep, where it's like Wednesday, we're going to the offense, we're going to like what we're going to do um what schemes we're going to run um and stuff like that and that's like a pretty like medium day not not super hard because we want to get things in but a little bit more medium to try to get the offensive schemes in and then thursday the day before the game um where it's pretty light just kind of getting into the flow of things again hon honing in on what we want to do offensively defensively running our schemes and stuff like that and then friday obviously we play saturday um we have to get ready for our next game so it's a very quick turnaround for the scout scouting report and so Watching film is super important. Um, just being like honed in on what you want to run and what we're trying to execute during the game is really important. And then we play again on Sundays. And so most days practice are three hours and that's, there's usually no wiggle room. There really wasn't any wiggle room for my program at least. Like it was going to be a, a, a three hour practice. And so we would start at nine, end at 12, start at eight, end at 11. And we were getting a lot done in those three hours. And so yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of how it went for the majority of my um, college career, where it was like, we're practicing for three hours and that would be like the game game week schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, uh, who, who was your favorite uh, basketball player? Um, um, like I said, at the top, 
Um, your, your phenomenal play on both sides of the court, offensively and defensively. So I know you admire. I know names on on the list is probably two way players. So so who was your favorite um, players, whether it be NBA or WNBA, um, growing up? Yeah, I'm gonna start with the WNBA. My favorite player, just like currently, I also growing up was Elena Deladon, but also Maya Moore oh. as well. Um, I love Elena Deladon. I love her game oh. offensively. She just is kind of like a cheat code. Um, yeah. and I just love what she stands for off the court as well. Um, I think that's really important for me. It's cool to obviously like have really, really favorite players, but like I also look at what, what they stand for as well, like who they are as people. Yes. And obviously, uh, my uh, Marla, unapologetic. Like, yes, exactly. And obviously, Maya Moore, we've seen what she's done with the social justice and just what she did with that. But then also, she's in a phenomenal basketball player. And she's somebody who, like, if the game was on the line, I would want her to take the shot, you know, like, oh man. She, she is phenomenal and she just has this dog mentality about her that I really, really admire about her. And she just has done so much for the women's basketball game, just in general. And then I would say on the NBA side, I would definitely say LeBron, like, of course. Um, I just think that, again, he stands for so much off the court with his I dream, I pro, uh, the dream school that he kind of, he um, made and just everything he stands for. But also, again, he's phenomenal on the court. He can do a little bit of everything. Um, and like, he just has been, on the top for a very long time. And I feel like he's never slowed down. And just like that consistency is admirable. So yeah, that's what I would say those three players. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, Aaron, Aaron's question is, um, I was gonna say, um, what was the toughest challenge uh, for you over the last year and a half in navigating through the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the world changing and you know, um, what What were some of the uh, health and safety guidelines that you had to go through in your final year at UCLA? And then to a certain extent, uh, your first year in the WNBA with Liberty. Yeah, it was tough. And, you know, COVID-19 was tough for everybody. But I just feel like personally, you your senior year of college, you want it to be so fun. Like, this is my last year of college. I want to enjoy it to the fullest extent. And I feel like COVID took that away, whereas I like, I was on online school, you know, we couldn't really do anything as far as like socially with my teammates. And I was living in LA, obviously, and which is a lot of people. So, you know, the LA County restrictions were really, really, really um, high. And so that was, you know, it was hard, but I think in COVID, it was such a year of like just pivoting and kind of adapting to certain, to new things. And obviously like there were so many things that I didn't love about, you know, my senior year online, you know, in, in COVID protocols, but I think on the other side, it helped. It just taught me so much about just like handling adversity, uh, adapting to certain things, and just who are you when things are not going the way you want them to go. And so that kind of taught me a lot about myself. And you know, senior year wasn't what I expected it to be. Uh, I didn't expect to play with no fans, at, like the whole year. The whole year, I didn't expect not to have my family. Did, on did y'all have um, in, in, in your last year at UCLA? Did you have your, your cut out board um, individuals like? Mm -hmm. was, yeah, I, we didn't play. I, that was, yeah. Yeah, no fans. I didn't expect to not have my family there at senior night. I didn't expect to, you know, have my graduation postponed. I didn't expect to, you know, have all of these things. And so like, it's, it. I'm not gonna lie, like it, it sucked, it really did. But again, it taught me so much about, you know, just myself, about life and how, you know, you approach like certain things that don't always go your way. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, what songs uh, motivate you uh, the most? um when you're either uh, working out or, or getting ready you know for upcoming um contests what five yeah, songs I'm, are in your playlist i'm an r&b person so like that's really what gets me going so anything about like summer walker kehlani um lucky day give on that really is i don't need anything like crazy to hide me up just like i love just being peaceful and calm so r&b is like where i live where i love it i love it all so those artists would definitely be in my top five Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, especially Summer Walker. Um, uh, she she actually joined us a few months ago. She she is oh, really? That's really cool. Is. I'll send you the video. Um, yeah, after. for sure. I would love to see it. Yeah, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, this question is, is from give me a moment, uh, from Shakira. What are your thoughts on the new NIL name, image, uh, likeness, endorsement opportunities 
that are offered now for NCAA uh, student, Division One student athletes? I think it's phenomenal. I'm really sad that I missed the opportunity, like by one year. I but will. like, I know just that much. But like, I think it's such an amazing opportunity, and I'm so glad the NCAA finally turned around and and doing something for the athletes that is so, so much in their benefit. Like the amount of profit and monetization that the NIL has for the opportunities of student athletes is so big, especially for those who don't have the opportunity and the avenue to go play professionally after their <laughs> school. Like mm -hmm. only that can only happen for like basketball and football and like only a select other amount of sports that have professional avenues. And so for some kids who are not, that's not gonna happen, like you were able to make money off your name, image and likeness in college, like that is so important and so beneficial. And I hope that all athletes in college right now take advantage. Um, I hope they do it in the, in the smartest, you know, most efficient, most beneficial way, but super, super happy that that transition has happened. Um, obviously, like I said, I wish it would have happened a little bit earlier, but you know, this is just the beginning for what it means to be a, you know, a college athlete. and like I said, I hope they just take full advantage of the opportunity. Can you imagine what would have happened if, if, if the, the NIL regulations were around during the past five years? Oh my gosh, they would have went crazy. Because because I always go back to the to the thirty for thirty on ESPN that that I saw about a couple of years ago with Chris Webber, and um and he had a heartfelt message that. Um, Everywhere he went in Ann Arbor, like like the bars, the restaurants, they had his number four uh, jersey hanging up, you know, pizza parlors everywhere. And how frustrated he was, the fact that he saw all of that love and everything, and you know everyone purchasing their number four jerseys, Jalen Rose, the whole nine, and um, he didn't he didn't even have enough money. To purchase a slice of pizza, but he saw crazy. all of this likeness. Everyone, you crazy. know, uh, cashing, yeah, crazy, cashing in on what he did at college, but he didn't have enough money for it's, for a slice of pizza. It's crazy. So, yeah. It's crazy. But um, the last couple of questions <laughs> that that we have, uh, th this one is from uh, Talina. Was there ever a point in your life where you had to cut off negative people and negative influences that was in your life that may have been jealous of you for whatever the reason was? Um, did you ever um, face that type of adversity? And if so, how did you handle those situations, whether it be in high school or in college? Fortunately, I did not, but I think that creating boundaries with people, your friends, your family, you know, your significant others is so important. And so I think sometimes that is necessary, you know, especially if you see that not everybody has your best interest at heart, especially when you get to a point where, you know, you're being really successful, you know, you're doing really well in school or whatever it may be, like, there are going to be those people, unfortunately. And so I think it is good to have those boundaries and have that like self-awareness that like, okay, this person is making me feel some type of way maybe I should un like, you know, kind of unpack why that is. And, you know, sometimes not everybody who, you know, you're really close friends with is going to continue in every single asset of your life. And so I think it's really, really good to have that self-awareness, self, self kind of just seeing like what that can look like. And so no, me personally, I haven't, but I think it's really good to have those boundaries and set those boundaries. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, the last couple of questions uh, that we have here, uh, uh this one is from destiny um was was there a, a trainer or or coach that stood out that pushed you that extra mile during your journey as a basketball great and what was the toughest injury that you recovered from yes so i would say my i've had a few trainers um in my day, but I would say that the most influential one is definitely, um, he's actually from Colorado, Jody Hollins. Um, wow. I've been with him since I was probably like a freshman in high school. So for a long time. And oh, so he just goodness. really, really, yeah. really believed in me. Um, he was like one of the first people to tell me that like, you're gonna be in the WNBA. And I kind of was like, you just, you have to say that because you're my trainer, you know, whatever. But like, he was like the first, one of the first people to really say that to me. And he just really believed in me. Um, and, you know, we've been together for a very long time. Like, obviously I was like, what 14 13 in, in high school mm. and so like you know he's really helped me a lot kind of helped me transition my game quite a bit and so that's been really cool you know to, to have him for sure and I haven't really had that many I haven't really had major injuries oh wow okay okay and um 
who who was your uh, favorite uh, M- NBA teams? The, the I can't believe the NBA season is starting in two weeks. It's oh my gosh, this is crazy! I feel like it just ended. Yeah, I think was it October nineteenth is 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 the first season opening. Yeah, is so that who, crazy? Who, who are your favorite? Uh, who are your favorite NBA teams? Um, I was I'm gonna say the Nuggets just because I'm from Denver. Um, oh yeah, I hope yeah, Jamal Murray uh, gets back. I know they signed Michael Porter Jr. to a match. Yeah. Team. And obviously the Joker, you know. Yes, uh, the MVP. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I would definitely say the Nuggets. Obviously, like I'm a really big Le- LeBron fan, but I'm gonna say the Nuggets is hometown hometown kid. And and they made it far even with uh, Jamal Murray's. Uh, if Jamal Murray was was healthy. And, uh, yeah, and he hurt I, himself. I think he's I think he's supposed to come back in December from his ACL. Yeah, that's a but, tough injury. Oh my goodness! Because I actually saw the game on ESPN. They were playing the Warriors, Golden State. Yeah. And and uh, oh my goodness! But he's supposed to come back in December, so hopefully, fully healthy, they they can make a legitimate run. And the oh, year before, sure. they took the Lakers to the one in uh, during the bubble. They did. So that's what I'm saying. I'm excited for the Lakers. They have they have some pieces that I'm really excited to watch. Yep, uh, they definitely have chemistry on their side. They're bringing the band back from the the role players from 2019. Uh, Rondo is back. The White Howard's back. Oh my gosh! Carmelo is there. It's, it's, the Lakers are going to be tough. They're going to be tough. Oh my! You can't ever count out LeBron. You can't ever. ever. You can't, can't. No, you can't count out the King at all. At all. Where Where can um your your legions of fans in Chicago? Uh, go to follow you in your journey in the Russian league um, as you're about to um, play internationally shortly. And um, where, where can they find you on social media? Yeah, so my Instagram is Michaela, M I C H A E L A underscore O 21. And then my Twitter name is M O N Y E N W E R E underscore. And so those are like the two platforms I use the most. Um, my, my, my um team is also on you know social media i'm playing for spar girona g-i-r-o-n-a and so those would be really three good places to kind of find and just kind of keep keep kind of keep tabs on what i'm doing um throughout kind of just this, these next few months okay absolutely absolutely and then the next time you come to chicago to play the sky take it easy on us because <laughs> i know a month ago you came here and uh, you and the Liberty came here and, and got a got a road win on us. So we did. We'll take, it, we'll take it easy on us, first of all. And then secondly, next time you're in Chicago, please come out and uh, visit some of our a, a couple of our schools. The young ladies would, would, would love to see their Shiro, their their role model, which is you. Um, uh, would, would love to meet you in person. Oh, of course. I would love to. I would love to. And I don't know about taking it easy on them, but I'll, I will right. try. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was just saying, figuratively. Figuratively <laughs> speaking, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Michaela. The 2021 WNBA Rookie of the Year. And the best is yet to come. Uh, watch out for the Liberty, y'all. They, they're, they're coming for that 2022 WNBA championship. And yes. obviously, go Bruins as well. Yes, go Bruins. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget, root, root for Lonzo Ball now. Mm-hmm. CCC, you got to root for the Bulls now. Yes, I have to. It's, it's, I have to. <laughs> well, thank you so, so very much. And um, we'll definitely uh, circle back, uh, touch bases soon. Okay. Thank you so much again for having me. I wish you all the best of luck and just keep in touch. If y'all need anything, you know, just an email away. Okay. Thank you so, so very much. Keep up the great work on and off the court. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.